Welcome to the Queen of Swords, the podcast where we take on relationship drama like a boss. Are you tired of being ghosted, breadcrumbed, or just plain confused? Well, grab a glass of wine, put on your favorite sweatpants, and join me, the one and only Queen of Swords, as I take you on a journey through the ups and downs of modern dating and relationships. With some relatable anecdotes and a little bit of tough love, I'm going to help you navigate the tricky waters of love, lust, and everything in between. So whether you're single, in a relationship, or it's complicated, join us every other week as we laugh, cry, and learn to slay the dating game like the queens that we are. Let's get started. Today we'll be exploring the joys, struggles, and absurdities of being in a long-distance relationship. A long-distance relationship is a romantic relationship in which the partners are physically separated from each other by a considerable distance, often with miles, kilometers, or even oceans between them. The average long-distance relationship is more than 125 miles apart. Um, It's a relationship in which two people involved, they're not able to see each other regularly or spend time together in person due to either geographic, financial, or other constraints. Did you know that over 14 million couples in the United States alone are in long-distance relationships? That's right, folks. You're not alone in your struggle to keep the spark alive when your significant other is miles away. But why are long-distance relationships becoming more common? Well, according to a study by the Center of the Study of Long Distance Relationships, yes, that is a thing, there are several reasons why long distance relationships are becoming more common in today's world. First, ease of communication. With the advancement of technology, it's now easier than ever to be able to communicate with somebody who's on the other side of the globe. You have video chat, messaging apps, social media platforms, all of these make it possible to stay connected even when there's physical distance between you and your partner. Two, increased travel opportunities. With the increase in travel opportunities, people are more likely to meet someone from a different part of the world and fall in love, leading to a long distance relationship. This could be somebody who is going abroad for work or going abroad to go to school, places that they wouldn't normally be, but they are for an extended amount of time. Three, globalization. The world is becoming more connected and globalized, which means people are moving to different countries or working in different places. This can lead to long distance relationships as partners may have to live in different parts of the world for extended periods of time. And finally, online dating. Online dating has become increasingly popular and many couples are meeting through dating apps and websites. This can lead to long distance relationships where the partners live in different parts of the country. But it isn't all sunshine and roses. It takes work, patience, and a whole lot of trust. Aristotle once said, love is composed of a single soul inhabiting two bodies. And when those two bodies are hundreds or even thousands of miles apart, maintaining that connection can be a real challenge. But fear not, we're here to help. Throughout this podcast, we're going to be sharing some stories, some advice, maybe even a few awkward moments, all in the name of keeping your long distance love alive and kicking. So whether you're separated by oceans or just a few states, join us on this journey as we explore the wild world of long-distance relationships. Ah, long-distance relationships, the ultimate test of love and trust, the source of countless songs, movies, and a little bit of heartbreak. Some people swear by them while others run in the opposite direction at the mere mention of the term. So what is the deal with long-distance relationships? Well, let's take a closer look at the pros and cons. Pro. You get plenty of me time. One of the upsides of being in a long distance relationship is that you have plenty of time to pursue your own interests and hobbies. No more feeling guilty for wanting to spend a lazy Sunday afternoon binge watching Netflix instead of going out on a date. According to a survey by Kiru, a company that specializes in long distance sex toys, 72% of people in long distance relationships say that they have had more time for themselves than they would have if they were in a traditional relationship. Con, the distance can be a real bummer. Obviously, the biggest downside of a long-distance relationship is the distance itself. It's hard to feel close to someone when they're hundreds or thousands of miles away. In fact, a study by Queen's University found that couples in long-distance relationships report feeling less intimate and less satisfied with their relationships than couples who live in the same city. Ouch. Pro. The reunions can be pretty epic. 
When you're in a long distance relationship, the time that you do spend together is precious. It's not like you can just pop over to your partner's place for a quick dinner or a movie. As a result, when you do finally get to see each other, it's extra special. According to a survey by the dating app OkCupid, 61% of people in long distance relationships say that the reunions are the best part of being in the relationship. Con. Trust issues can be real. Let's face it, being in a long distance relationship requires a lot of trust. You have to trust that your partner is being faithful, that they're not secretly seeing someone else, and that they're really as committed to the relationship as that they say they are. According to a survey by the dating site eHarmony, 27% of people in long distance relationships say that jealousy and trust issues are the biggest challenges that they face. Pro, you get to know each other really well. When you're in a long distance relationship, you can't rely on physical intimacy to keep the spark alive. Instead, you have to rely on other forms of communication, like texting, phone calls, video chats. As a result, you can really get to know each other on a deeper level. According to a survey by the dating site Zoosk, 70% of people in long-distance relationships said that they've had more meaningful conversations than they feel like they would have had in a traditional relationship. Con. The lack of physical intimacy can be tough. Of course, all the deep conversations in the world can't replace the feeling of being physically close to someone that you love. According to a survey by the sex toy company Lilo, 63% of people in long-distance relationships say that the lack of physical intimacy is the biggest challenge that they face. And how do these people end up in long-distance relationships in the first place? Let's share a couple of stories from listeners for you. Sarah and James had been dating for a few years before James moved across the country for a job opportunity. They decided to give long distance a try, but it wasn't easy. Sarah missed James so much that she would sometimes cry herself to sleep. James, on the other hand, found it hard to balance his new job with the demands of the relationship. According to a study by the Center of the Study of Long Distance Relationships, 40% of long distance relationships end within six months, and Sarah and James became one of those relationships. Sometimes people don't plan to end up in a long distance relationship, but life kind of takes them in that direction anyway. Take the case of Tim and Jessica. They met on a dating app while Tim was on vacation in Jessica City. They hit it off right away, and they spent the week exploring the city together. When Tim had to go back home, they thought maybe this was going to be the end of the relationship. But they kept in touch, and before they knew it, they were in a long-distance relationship. According to a survey by the dating app Plenty of Fish, 47% of people in long-distance relationships say that they ended up there completely unexpectedly. And... Sometimes people fall in love with someone who lives in another country. This is what happened to Laura and Carlos. They met while Laura was on a study abroad program in Carlos's country. They only had a few weeks together before Laura had to go back home, but they knew that they had something special. So they decided to give long distance a try, even though it meant dealing with time zone differences and expensive flights. According to the survey by the Center of the Study of Long Distance Relationships, 14% of all long distance relationships are international. Communication is something that we talk about in one way or another in most of our episodes, and that is because communication is one of the things that really can make or break a relationship regardless of the distance. So why is communication in a long distance relationship so important? Well, According to the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, communication was the most important factor in maintaining a successful long-distance relationship. So much so, in fact, that the study found that the more frequently couples communicated, the more likely they were to stay together. But let's be real. Communication in a long-distance relationship is easier said than done. The first issue that usually pops up is different expectations about communication. People can get frustrated if their partner doesn't at least send a hello or even an emoji throughout the day to let them know that they're thinking of them. And then there are other people who are okay not having contact during the earlier part of the day because they know that they're going to connect later on. And this is something that I see in almost all relationships, not just long distance relationships, because rarely do people have the same exact communication style. So how do you get on the same page? Well, shh, it's a secret. You have to communicate. Andrea and Mike were struggling with the communication. If Mike didn't message her at least three times a day, she started to spin and worry that this meant he didn't want to be with her, he was seeing someone else, you name it, she thought it. Mike was frustrated because he isn't glued to his phone 24-7, and his job didn't allow employees to have their phones on them while they were working. Andrea was eventually able to let Mike know, in a more productive way than she had been, 
that she feels more connected when there's some sort of regular contact. Mike needed to impress on her that he couldn't check his messages until after work. They were able to come to a common ground by Mike giving her a copy of his work schedule so that she would know when he would be unavailable, and Mike was able to make sending her a good morning, I'm headed to work, I'll message you when I get home message every morning. By being clear about the expectations and the reality of what could be done, they were able to fix some of the stress in the relationship fairly easily. Another issue that seems to pop up a lot is having nothing to say. And this is another one of those things that is not exclusive to a long distance relationship. There are days where my husband and I can sit in absolute silence. It's the being next to each other that matters, but that is so much harder when you aren't in the same place. I've seen some really interesting ways to get around that. Janice told us that she and her boyfriend would be on FaceTime together while cooking dinner, even sitting down together. They'd set a place at the table and put their phone or their computer there so that it was almost like they were sitting across from each other. And they'd eat dinner together and have a conversation. Jeff is another person who shared his go-to technique. He purchased a card game just for it, and there are a ton of them out there. Um, when you head over to their show notes, we're going to have some link that you can check out. Every night, they would each pick a card out of their respective decks and discuss. Sometimes they'd pull a question that was deep and meaningful. Sometimes it was something that turned out to be really silly. But So not only did they gain some insight into each other, but they had fun, and it gave them something to look forward to every night. So now let's talk about the challenges of intimacy and long-distance relationships, both physical and emotional. We all know that distance is supposed to make the heart grow fonder, right? But it also makes things a little bit more complicated. Most of us hear the word intimacy and we automatically think sex, right? Well, yes, but it is deeper than that. Intimacy as a whole is created with trust and a connection between two partners. A healthy relationship needs a balance of physical and emotional intimacy. Physical intimacy is the closeness, the touching, the kissing, the sex. Emotional intimacy is the feeling of connection to your partner. Because most long-distance relationships reserve physical intimacy for visits, it becomes even more important to develop that emotional intimacy, which comes from our old friend, communication. In a regular relationship, you have easy access to your partner on an almost everyday basis. You get to see each other, talk to each other as a way to maintain that emotional intimacy. When you're in a long-distance relationship, physical intimacy is almost impossible. So depending on your situation, you may not see your long-distance partner for weeks or even months at a time. While you're not seeing your romantic partner, your body still needs that reassurance that you're physically in a romantic relationship. You can think and talk about being in a romantic relationship, but your body feels different. When the need for physical intimacy is not fulfilled, you can start feeling sexually frustrated, which is perfectly normal and expected. But sexual frustration in a long-distance relationship doesn't only affect the sexual aspect of your life. This frustration affects other areas of your life, like work and friendships. It can affect your long-distance relationship in many ways. The obvious one is a desire to fulfill your sexual needs. If you're in a romantic relationship, your need for sex, it's probably somewhere right up at the top of your list, right? Well, in a long-distance relationship, you can only have sex with your partner when you see them, which could be months. If the distance in your relationship is only going to last a few months until you move in together or move closer to each other, then there are ways that you can manage that. You can play with your partner on video calls, texting, phone calls. But if the distance in your long-distance relationship lasts a long time, it'll become very unhealthy from a sexual point of view. When you don't see your romantic partner for a long time, you naturally want to fulfill those sexual desires with someone else. Telling your partner about it can be awkward and uncomfortable, and some people tend to skip that and just get involved with other people outside of their relationship. Cheating is one of the top three long-distance relationship killers, accounting for 34% of all long-distance relationship splits. To manage sexual frustration in a long-distance relationship, you need to take it for what it is. It's a sign that your sexual needs and desires are not being fulfilled. You may think that you're compromising if you ignore or suppress your feelings about it. In reality, all you're doing is making yourself unhappy. And when you're unhappy in the relationship, it's not going to take long before the entire relationship falls apart. So if you're in a long distance relationship, you need to have a sex talk with your partner. You need to agree on how often you need to visit each other. And if it's enough to fulfill those needs, if you can't visit each other frequently enough, 
you may have to consider something like an open, open long distance relationship. An open long distance relationship would allow you to maintain the trust and connection with your romantic partner while fulfilling your desires with someone close to you. Sometimes people aren't comfortable with the sex conversation, and I get it. It makes you feel really vulnerable. But if you want your relationship to succeed, then you need to have these tough conversations sometimes. Sit down with your partner and talk about it. Discuss how long the distance is going to last, how often you're going to get together in person, how are you going to satisfy your needs when you're apart, and any ground rules. I've talked to women who don't want their partner to watch porn while they're apart, and then I've talked to others who are okay with their partner getting a blowjob but not having intercourse. In some of the resources in the show notes, there are going to be some worksheets and specific conversation topics that will help with a lot of these issues. Some of them will also touch on in a couple of weeks when we have an entire episode about cheating. I could spend hours on this alone, but we do have to move on. There are a number of things that can cause problems or splits in a long-distance relationship. They include jealousy, insecurity, cheating, lack of progress, and having no plan. In some cases, it also becomes a financial strain, but let's talk about all of these a bit more. First up is that old green-eyed monster called jealousy. It is the number two relationship killer at 28.7% of the relationships looked at. It can often happen where one partner starts to have an issue that their partner's spending time with other people. It doesn't even have to be somebody that's a romantic rival. It could be as simple as being jealous of the fact that someone is getting to see them day after day, eating out together, going to events, mundane things. And this ties into our next issue, insecurity. Insecurity affects 34% of long distance relationships with the often quoted idea of out of sight, out of mind, causing the problems, which isn't surprising. Insecurity can be related to the presence of significant others in respective partner's life, which can make one feel neglected and insecure about their importance in their own partner's life. It's advisable that partners quell such anxieties by dedicating time towards planning near future events. These are things like vacations and get-togethers, starting at least tentative planning about future goals like living together or marriage. Such planning can improve the attachment between the partners and also gives a sense of security to both of them. Communication helps a lot here too. Another issue that can cause problems in a long distance relationship is a lack of progress. When you're apart, it can be difficult to feel like you're moving forward in the relationship. In fact, a recent study found that 38% of long-distance couples struggle with the lack of progress. So, what can you do to make progress in a long-distance relationship? Well, you can set goals for your relationship, make plans for the future, celebrate your achievements together. Finally, there's the issue of having no plan at all. When you're in a long-distance relationship, it's important to have a plan for the future. In fact, a recent study found that 47% of long-distance relationship couples struggle with having zero plan. And 70% of all long-distance relationships that failed were because there was no plan for the future. And that's a pretty significant portion. I've seen plenty of people hang on even though it's clear that things are going nowhere fast. Because who wants to admit that they've wasted a significant chunk of their time on something that's not working out? So how do you know when it's time to throw in the towel and move on? You just don't feel invested anymore. In the beginning, you you couldn't wait to talk about how their day was, what they were doing exciting, what they think about something that's going on in your life, and eventually you stop asking questions. You might start to zone out when the other person talks. Conversations that were hours long are now short and abruptly end because one of you has a thing that they have to take care of. You no longer talk about the future, and it's small talk and minor details from your life. Lack of commitment. This one kind of creeps up on you. You start to have less quality time, or it becomes unreliable. Maybe Saturday was your day to soak up each other with no work or commitments to interrupt you. But recently, your partner cuts calls short or reschedules on you. At first, the reasons seem really reasonable, and you kind of roll with it. But then they start to pile up, and when they start to pile up, the resentment builds. The more it happens, the less guilty both of you start to feel for not following through on plans. After all, a precedent has now been set, and you've shown each other that it's okay not to follow through. Putting off visits. Studies have shown 
over and over that the more often you see each other in person, the higher your chances of success. Now you're looking forward to other things more and you're no longer counting down the days until you're together again. Gradually work, the price of flights, etc. It all becomes excuses and one or both of you says things like, well, you know, things are really busy here. I'm going to have to figure out when I can make time to visit and I'll let you know. But there never really seems to be a good time. Financial issues. Inflation is starting to have a considerable impact on long distance relationships over the last year or so. Even under the best of circumstances, it can get pretty expensive to go and see your partner all the time. Even if you trade off, you know, they come see you this time, you go see them next time, it still gets pretty expensive. Price of gas keeps rising, flights are damn near highway robbery depending on where you're going, and even the hotels start to add up. I have seen a number of relationships fail over the last year because they went from flying to see each other maybe once every two months to maybe twice a year, if that. Now, these could be legitimate reasons why things fizzle out, or they could be just being used as a convenient excuse. Either way, long term, the relationship is no longer worth the expense and the sacrifice. So even when you gain that clarity that says, I need to let this relationship go, it's easier said than done. Even knowing that the average long distance relationship only lasts about four and a half months doesn't make it any easier. There can be a million reasons to put off breaking up. Maybe they've been dealing with stress and work, maybe their dog's been sick, but no matter what's going on, it's gonna hurt anyway, so there's no sense in stringing them along. When it comes to the actual breakup, please, 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 do not do it over the phone or via text. This is the coward's way out, and it usually ends up causing you far more problems than it's worth. An in-person conversation is best if it's done correctly. Don't let them spend a ton of money to come visit you thinking everything is cool and then you tell them as soon as they get here. If in-person is not possible, do it over video. They deserve the respect of you looking them in the eye when you tell them. Be direct about why you want to end things. Don't blame them but and be kind, but also don't give them false hope. Cut contact, grieve the loss of the relationship, and then focus on staying busy. Studies show that a breakup can affect your brain, much like drug or alcohol withdrawal, so understand that it's gonna take some time to sort of detox from the relationship and be ready to look forward. Give yourself no less than 30 days, but most experts will tell you to account for about a month for every year that you've been together. As we wrap up the episode, it's clear that long distance relationships come with both benefits and challenges. While distance can strengthen the emotional bond between partners and provide opportunities for personal growth, it can also present some really nasty communication and intimacy obstacles. It's important to recognize that not every long distance relationship is the same and what works for one couple may not work for another. Open and honest communication, creativity, and a willingness to adapt and grow are going to be key to making your long-distance relationship successful. So whether you're currently in a long-distance relationship or you're considering starting one, remember to approach it with patience, understanding, and a positive attitude. And if you're struggling with any of the challenges that we've discussed, know that you're not alone. Head on over to the show notes for some great resources on how to create a healthy long-distance relationship how to deal with challenges. We've got some workbooks, some worksheets. There's some great stuff over there. So thank you for joining us on this journey of exploring long distance relationships. We hope that this episode has provided you with some valuable insights and perspectives, and we look forward to exploring more topics in the future. Well, folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Queen of Swords. We hope you enjoyed the ride and that you're feeling a bit more empowered and a little bit less confused about the wild world of dating and relationships. Remember, when it comes to love, there are no easy answers, but with a little bit of humor, a lot of self-care, and a trusty sword by your side, you can handle anything the heart throws your way. So until next time, keep your sword sharp, your heart open, and your standards high. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon.